I'm a part of Abaji team and I'm responsible for uh, machine vision here. So today our goal is to answer the questions people are asking about computer vision in robotics. So let's dive in. First of all, there are 2D cameras, uh, industrial 2D cameras, they look like this. The technology behind is very similar to uh, the cameras that are around us, like CCTV cameras or cameras in our cell phone. So the output of this camera is only the 2D image. And the difference is the industrial housing, uh, some industrial optics with a fixed focal length and industrial interfaces. So the next is uh, 3D cameras or 3D scanners or snapshot scanners as we call them. So there are a lot of types. Uh, they differ a lot in size. For example, this big guy here uh, is a snapshot scanner that we use. Or uh, this little guy here as well. Or this guy. Or this sensor is also a snapshot scanner. So uh, they are all different, uh, they range in their size, uh, the price of course, and uh, the common thing between them is that they all output uh, the depth information as well as the image. So the output of these sensors is the point cloud and they take a snapshot point cloud. So they take uh, an instance of the point cloud at one moment of time. You don't need to move them or so, uh, something like that. They just uh, capture the point cloud. So the next type is uh, triangulation uh, laser range sensors. So uh, this is the point laser sensor. So it projects the laser line and uh, uh, we have a red dot. And this uh, device measures the distance to this red dot. And this one is a line profile laser uh, sensor. So uh, this one projects the whole laser line. So you, we have a red line or blue line uh, on the surface and it measures the distance to every point of this line. So by this, we get the profile of some object. And we, if we want to scan the whole object, we just need to move uh, the scanner along the object to get each profile and then stitch them all together. So for this, we usually use robots. So we install this on the robot arm and just move it along some surface or some object if we want to scan. So the LIDARs are uh, very widespread in self-driving cars and they are also used in mobile robotics. Uh, are they used in industrial robotics with our uh, robotic welders? So uh, the answer is no and uh, the reason is the combination of LIDAR specifications and price. Actually, LIDARs are uh, very long-range uh, sensors with relatively high accuracy uh, so they can uh, sense up to 100 meters and the accuracy is uh, about the order of centimeters. Uh, but the drawback is first their price and second uh, the very sparse data they output. So in self-driving cars it's not a problem because uh, in self-driving cars uh, we need to perceive uh, the objects from the far distance and in outdoor environment and the, the sparsity of the data is not a problem. Okay, so the combination of LIDAR's long range, robustness in outdoor environment and relatively good accuracy is good for self-driving cars, but the data is sparse and the sparsity of the data is, is a problem for us in industrial robotics. So uh, in industrial robotics, uh, we prefer to use some snapshot scanners or range sensors where we can get much more dense data and where the accuracy is higher. And uh, another thing is that we don't need to uh, look so far away. Uh, that's why LIDAR is, is, is not our need.
Actually, there are pros and cons. The 2D cameras are very similar to regular cameras that are around us, like in our phone, in CCTV cameras and others. Uh, the output of these cameras is uh, just a 2D image. Uh, they are relatively cheap, they have good resolution, they can acquire color, and they are good enough in uh, tasks like object detection, segmentation, classification, etc. And if the scene is flat, then 2D camera is okay. But we live in a 3D world, and uh, when it comes to real measurements, it's better to use uh, 3D cameras with depth information. For example, uh, Let's imagine we have a camera uh, and uh, it's shooting uh, a table and there is a square object on this table. And we need to find out the coordinates of this object. So our camera uh, sees something like this. Square table and an object there. So if we know the distance from uh, the camera to the table or the size of the table, I don't know, D, or the size of the object, uh, we can calibrate. We know that this size is D millimeters. And we know that in our sensor, it's, I don't know, 1000 pixels. So in this way we can uh, write a simple fo formula and get the z-coordinate of this plane. But let's imagine uh, we have, we don't know the age. And we have another table here and smaller object here. And in the camera picture our object will, will look exactly the same as the blue one, but the Z is very different. And this is, the, this is actually the problem. And this is a very simple example with a flat uh, object. And uh, already here, we don't have enough information. So if our, if our camera doesn't see the edges of the table, for example, or we don't know the distance from the camera to the table, we cannot estimate the correct size of the object. And now imagine if we have some, uh, something difficult here, some part, or uh, I don't know, some, some car. Uh, so how can we estimate the position, the Z, of this uh, object? Of course, uh, modern algorithms and machine learning can get the measurements even from the flat 2D images, but the accuracy is sometimes not good enough for our applications. That's why using 3D cameras is much better. But 3D cameras and scanners also have their drawbacks. Uh, the major one is that the data we get using them is much more complicated. In general, 3D data is much more complicated than flat 2D images. Uh, it's much more difficult even to view it because you need special software. Uh, in contrast, for 2D images, you can just use a simple image viewer on your PC and you do it every day when browsing the internet and so on. So for 3D data, you need some special software where you can view the data because it's unstructured point cloud in contrast to a normal 2D image that you get with the 2D camera. And also for 3D data, we need much more complex algorithms. Uh, Luckily, uh, these days, 3D computer vision algorithms and machine learning is quickly developing, but still the algorithms and the architectures of the neural networks are much more complicated. To summarize, uh, 3D cameras are more expensive, they uh, generate more data, and the algorithms to work with this data is more complicated. But the data is more precise and we have Z information. 2D cameras are more widespread, there are a lot of algorithms and really good algorithms for 2D data, uh, but for some applications the precision that, that we get is not enough.